All right, so I think we're ready to go. Uh, please let me know if you can't see the screen. I have a screen up that has a picture of me and Tesla and sound frequencies. So hopefully everybody's seeing that and everybody can hear me. We are gonna be talking about Tesla today and I'm actually kind of excited about it uh, for lots of reasons. It's a little bit of a variation, not that much about the Wave Watch. We'll have some questions and answers at the end. But uh, don't forget that we have Wave Watch Frequency Fanatics on Facebook and my website is um, www.wavewatch.com. So we'll be, um, you know, just sharing some ideas about the Wave Watch and how it was possible. Who made it possible? So happy birthday to Tesla, Nikola Tesla. He was born July 10th in 1856. And supposedly he was born at the stroke of midnight on July 10th. So that's this week. So that it just came to me. It's like, oh, let's have fun. Let's have a birthday party for uh, Tesla and uh, let you know how the Wave Watch would not be possible if it wasn't for Tesla. So I, I think that's the whole beginnings of so many things in our world. And I didn't know most of these things. I've uh, just learned and learned and learned. So supposedly uh, Tesla was born during an electrical storm. And supposedly that was a prophetic beginning for the child who was to become known as the father of electricity. And he died in 1943. And if any of you know his story, he died pretty poor and penniless in a hotel in New York. So this is my favorite little um, idea that I tried to do. I hope you all get to laugh with me. <laughs> but uh, wait, is that a wave watch on Nicola? I actually think maybe this is the reason I'm doing this today, because he started it all. And here's one of his big quotes. The desire that guides me in all I do is the desire to harness the for forces of nature to the service of mankind. So he was a very uh, kind hearted man and not much of a businessman. He could have been worth millions and millions or billions in today's, uh, you know, time frame. Uh, but he he chose to give away a lot of his patents to help others and in the end hurting himself. But I thought you might have a laugh with me at the wave watch on Nicola's hand. So don't forget that the reason I'm talking about this, if you just came in, is that Nikola Tesla is the reason that we can even have something called the Wave Watch or all of these other technologies that are now coming out. He's also known for this phrasing. If you want to find the secrets of the universe, think in terms of energy, frequency, and vibration. And this is a picture of him that's pretty well known when he was younger. And then these are some things that he's known for too. So I thought that was pretty interesting. I don't know how many has, of you have seen those pictures, but this was the Warden Cliff uh, Tower in New York where he was uh, trying to generate uh, frequencies and then an image of what goes on down below. So I'll show you a few more ideas, but just some pictures to share with you because again, I'm kind of celebrating his birthday. I don't know if any of you have been hearing, uh, I listen to a lot of different um, channels and um, maybe alternative ideas, or I'm not sure what phrasing I wanna use, but a lot of people have been talking about um, Tesla's birthday this week. So very, very interesting, you know, uh, some of the phrasing that they're using, using, and I'm not going to go, you know, political, but that was another idea that struck my mind. It's like, oh, he's in the news this week. Let's make sure that we cover him and we know a little bit about him. So Tesla powered our world, and I'm just blown away at how he powered our world. Of course, he has the AC, which powers our world, you know. Uh, he did fluorescent lighting. He had Tesla light therapy. He actually developed x-rays, though he may not have gotten credit for all of that. He has neon lights. He developed hydroelectric power. He developed the radio. He developed remote control. 
Can you imagine what was there to remote control back in the 1880s, you know, 90s, 1900s? What was there to control? But he had an actual boat that he could control remotely. And he was trying to sell that idea to the Navy. And they didn't want to do any, have anything to do with it. They didn't know how that was even possible. And of course, today, everything that they use is remote controlled. And that we use, you know, our TV, everything, <laughs> but uh, drones, we're thinking about those a little bit more today. But he did this 100 years ago. He uh, developed the electric motor. And of course, thank goodness, his the company Tesla is named after his efforts. I think that is amazing. Um, he actually developed robotics. And I'm not sure that I understand exactly what he did. He laid out the metaphysics of the human body. So don't quote me on that one. I'm not exactly sure where that goes. And um, he also developed the laser. Now, supposedly he had also uh, worked on, and he did patent something that he called the death ray or the death beam because he was so against war. And he thought if he developed something that had the potential to wipe out millions of people without even you know, stepping, taking a step, towards another country aggressively, that that would be um, very um, negative against war. And I guess it's kind of the same idea of what was done with the nuclear bombs, but um, that was his idea, the uh, laser. And he also developed the Tesla coil, and which is a magnifying transmitter array. And as I was looking at all of this information to present today, this is exactly what HARP is. So I'm a little confused on some of these things because uh, that doesn't necessarily mean that all of his inventions have been used for good. To me, the HARP is a little bit different. I don't know if anybody's seen uh, how HARP can um, develop and work with uh, millions of electrical uh, frequencies. And I've seen a couple of videos on how it can change weather, of course. So um, anyway, that is a started with Tesla's ideas. Now he immigrated to New York City in 1884 and he held over 300 patents. And then some things he didn't even bother to patent and you know, uh, didn't work with them. But he had so many ideas and he dedicated his life to that. He didn't ever get married. He worked day and night. He was almost uh, a little bit OCD is what we would call it today. And uh, he was known for having quite the personality of walking around the building three times before he would enter it. And uh, he loved the numbers 369, which we'll talk about a little bit more. But he definitely, uh, was uh, quite the personality. So here's the 369. He loved um, the, the coding of 369. And we've been able to turn a sound image today into a picture. And some of you may have seen these before. The cymatics is the phrasing for that to, to see the image of a sound frequency in this way. And so that's really interesting. It's a whole different study. But if you are interested, and maybe in his honor, uh, you can go to uh, Wave Watch, excuse me, you can go to uh, YouTube, I said it wrong. Uh, you can go to YouTube and look at Tesla's 369 music because that was his favorite number. And he said 369 was the uh, center of the universe. And the, those, was, those numbers were just something that turned up time and time and time again in his inventions. So it's very, very fascinating how the mind of this man worked. But problems started to occur as his inventions came out more and more. They were very dangerous to the ruling class. He actually had plans for free energy and he had medical technology based on sound. So these inventions were very dangerous and there were people, you know, at that time, part of the ruling class, they had the money just like today. So one of the people that he actually sparred with a little bit 
was Edison. And there's quite the story on this. Um, Edison, of course, did not want to lose his royalties. He was maybe a little bit more of a businessman than, than uh, Tesla. And he was earning some from his DC patents. Uh, but um, he tried to discredit Tesla's idea. And this is what I thought was so interesting because today we can see you know, somebody that develops a huge new business and they're being discredited or there's information here or, you know, we know what our world is today. I don't need to say too much about it. But in that time, what Edison actually did, he actually gathered up stray animals and electrocuted them with AC power to prove to people that they were very dangerous. And they made a big deal. They actually had a circus elephant that they lined up and electrocuted this elephant in with all of the uh, news people there. And so I thought that was very, very interesting. Um, so that, um, excuse me, here we go. Um, the, it went out in all the newspapers. People could see the uh, information uh, how AC power could be very dangerous before it, because they could electrocute animals with it. And then there was also a story that when they were looking for a better way to quote unquote, put people to death, that somebody behind the scenes developed the electric chair so that again, it would throw a bad light onto Tesla's invention with the AC power. So just think about this. Edison had the DC and uh, Tesla had the AC. So there was a huge power struggle going on at the turn of the century just to get our electric companies up and working. But tes Tesla kind of got him back. I'm sure you can read this at the bottom yourself. But Tesla countered this shocking uh, exhibition of electrocuting a um, elephant by showing that himself, he shocked himself with 250,000 volts, volts using al alternating current to showcase its safety. Now, I don't understand all that, but there is the website that I got it from. So gosh, that's quite a circus in itself, uh, just so that they're jockeying back and forth AC and DC power. But obviously AC power won out. It was much, much easier to use and DC power kind of uh, went in the background quite a bit. So another fight that he had going was with um, um, JP Morgan. Uh, so in 1899, Tesla went to research, uh, established a research laboratory in Colorado Springs. And it was thought that maybe he left New York City because there were stories of him doing some experiments with high voltage, where he just clipped a, a tool that he invented onto this high-rise building that was going up with just metal in it. And basically, in just a few minutes, that building was shaking and looking like it would fall down. <laughs> so uh, he was doing all kinds of experiments. Um, but he did work with uh, J.P. Morgan, and he worked on uh, transmitting free energy through the air for around the world. And so he had uh, Morgan's money, but when Morgan finally heard or understood that it was to be free power, you know, this is the quote that they're saying, if anyone can draw on the power, where do we put the meter? Again, it was all about money. It didn't matter who Tesla worked with, it was about money. Gee, I think that's our world today, isn't it? <laughs> so he lost his support he lost Morgan's financial support for that huge endeavor that he was doing. And um, they said even in Colorado Springs that there was a possibility that some of the tools that he uh, worked with were um, possibly causing earthquakes. So again, that kind of goes back to the harp idea. I don't know, but uh, Tesla was really making some uh, electrical uh, charges, I guess you'd say, in that time period. So again, 
so far we have uh, Morgan withdrawing information, having a big fight with um, uh, Edison and really making a public controversy out of it. And then I have one more, I think it's coming up. Uh, My screen is slow moving. So here was his vision that electricity could be all over the world without towers, without different things, that it could be wirelessly transmitted. And that was a hundred years ago. So there's his invention, just a great picture, I thought. So in 1901, Tesla had moved from Colorado Springs and he went back to uh, New York and he built this large uh, high voltage wireless energy station called Wardenclyffe Tower. And it was supposed to be the prototype for this wireless system, the world wireless system that was to broadcast information and power. So he demonstrated that this technology uh, work to in investors, but they pulled out. And that was because JP Morgan had pulled out and then they all could see that there was no money to be made from it. So they even started a disinformation campaign. Have we heard that word lately? <laughs> uh, they then told the world, I'm not sure how many newspapers and how many people and how often it was printed or where it was, you know, how that information was passed out, but the word definitely got out that, that, in, that his inventions would never work. So this idea is kind of what spurred me on today to show you this information. And you know, I've spent many hours looking at this and I'm sure some of you have studied Tesla. I hope I'm not too boring, but it's so fascinating because we are hearing time and time again today, if you're listening to some different um, you know, programs, that there's free energy that could be coming. And I'm going, well, where is it? What happened? How are they going to do it? Tell me about this, you know? So, you know, really? How? How? So we're going to fast forward to today. And there really is a startup company named Enrod, Enrod that says they have figured it out. But just think, it was over 100 years later that they're now finally saying something. So um, this company is saying that their components are pretty good. They're close to 100%. And I'm, I'm not sure if all of this makes a lot of sense, uh, but I'm just trying to find how is it possible? Are they really getting to the point where maybe we could have some free electricity? And so this is the quote from uh, Greg Kush Kushner. That's interesting. Um, that is the Imrod founder. And he's saying, we're using solid state for the transmitting side. And that's the same electronic elements in any radar system or even your microwave. And they're about 70% efficiency, but they're going to get more and more. So energy can be transmitted through electronic, electromagnetic waves over long distances. Again, this is Tesla's idea 100 years ago, which we were told through disinformation and because of money would never, never work. But finally, we're throwing our heels up and somebody's working on it. Or has it already been worked on? That's what I'd like to know behind the scenes. Do we already have some free energy that could be coming out? I don't know. I'm just having fun because this is Nikola Tesla's birthday week. Now, this is more information about how he got that idea that is now being copied 100 years later. Supposedly, Tesla used the technology from, that he reinvented from Egyptian technology. And you can see there actually was a picture, and I don't think I got it in, but they showed a picture of the pyramid and underneath it and how it had natural harmonics. Does that talk about sound, natural harmonics? 
and energy from minerals. And uh, he was able to recreate that with his uh, Wardenclyffe Towers. Now, this is what gets me. And I know I'm hoping you can see this. I put it in black and really in bold. This would have allowed people to tap into the Earth's natural power source. And this one is saying the ionosphere with roughly 10 million kilowatts of power every second, which exceeds the use of the power for the entire planet. It would take roughly 90 seconds at this power level to fuel all the planet's power needs for a year. I'm taking a big gasp because I just read that, but really? <laughs> so what kind of a, a change are we looking for? Are we gonna get some of this change? I don't know, but I thought I should let you know if some of you haven't seen this idea that there's some possibilities. So here's another idea. Don't know, but uh, he was definitely tapping into electricity. And there's one more step to it. Where does this electricity come from? I guess I have one more, one more slide to show you before I tell you that. But again, it's kind of saying the same thing. Uh, this technology was intentionally hidden from us. Unbeknownst to many of us, the air around us carries a voltage of about 100 volts for every meter above the ground. And Tesla discovered a way to harness this unlimited electricity with a coil on top of his tower, which he named Zero Point Energy. This technology is capable of powering every city on Earth for eternity for free. So again, I don't know if this is truth or false, but I wanted to try to figure out or see if, I, if it made sense. Where was he going to get this from? I seem to be missing a slide here. I'm going to go back for it. Okay. Huh. I'm missing a couple slides that I can't think where. Ah, oh, this is it. This is the slide that I was missing. This is really the meat of it. Guess what they're using to make the electricity out of? Sound. Now this has kept me awake at night <laughs> after I saw this. Thanks, Anne, for coming in. I'm just starting one of the things that I think is so fascinating. They can use sound to turn it into electricity. It's already been done. So microphones and speakers are examples of sound becoming electrical energy. So sound energy turns sound into electricity. So it goes through electrical um, uh, energy or it becomes the sound vibrations become electrical energy through electromagnetic induction now lots of big words here i'm not sure i understand any of them but there's two or three steps but sound has to kind of be magnetized a little bit and then an electromagnetic induction will generate the electrical current using a magnetic field when this magnetic field and a conductor such as a wire coil move, then this electromagnetic induction occurs. So I hope you're seeing where I'm going with this. Sound is the most important thing that we need to learn about. They're, they are able to turn energy from sound. Sound energy can be turned into electricity. So I guess in the middle of the night, I'm going, but where is Tesla? I'm waking up in the middle of the night going, where is Tesla getting the sound from? Because in the skies that they're talking about, the ionosphere doesn't necessarily make noise. So to me, in the middle of the night, I'm waking up saying, oh my goodness, he's got this whole idea underneath the tower. And he's using the Schumann resonance to pick up 
the vibrations of sound from the earth. And this is exactly what they say that the ancient technologies did, especially on the um, uh, pyramids. So again, I'm not saying that's cut and dry. I'm saying that's my little bit of research to let you know that there are some amazing possibilities and tools that are going to be continued to be made using sound technology. And of course, this is where and why I'm presenting this today, because the Wave Watch wouldn't even be here without all of Tesla's innovations, his innovations powered factories that make this, of course. Uh, the list goes on and on. I wouldn't be talking to you today. Uh, I wouldn't have delivery on the Wave Watch without his technologies. So he is the most amazing, amazing person. Uh, and uh, all of the work that he done just blows me away. I keep learning more and more. And, you know, this could have been a 15 part story or whatever. There's so much to it. Now, switching gears just a little bit, Tesla kind of got put in the background because what he wanted to do was free for people. He wanted the world to have free power. And that could never work in, even in the society 100 years ago. And he also wanted the world to have medical technologies, electrical based, which again would be on sound. So that's what we actually have today. But he was the start of all of our sound technology. So I looked and looked and looked, and I, I'm not quite for sure, but they said that he had a round vibrational platform. I'm not sure that I found a picture of it. I, I spent several hours trying to do that. But he did develop a vibrational platform which was actually people were feeling the vibrations generated by sound. <laughs> I hope that makes sense. Think of the Wave Watch. So he asked um, you know, his uh, assistants to try it and they were stunned but satisfied. And then some of them felt an immediate urge to leave the room and go to the, you know, the bathroom, going to the bathroom. And then he said the, tr you know, the awesome truth dawned on him that basically he had made something that would change human uh, health. So for the rest of his life, he would use his oscillation machine to treat people with a wide, wide variety of health problems from constipation to heart disease, injuries, infections, sleep disorders, and hormonal imbalances. Wow. I think, you know, I'm still saying, look at this. So he described this invention, his invention, as the greatest contribution to human welfare that he had ever done. So this is one of his favorite inventions. Have you heard of this? I had to dig deep to find this. We don't know about this. We did not know about vibrations. We did not know. And I can say it again and again. I did find a picture of a Tesla oscillator. I don't know exactly what it's saying. I don't know how he used it because I heard that people would stand on a plate to receive the vibrations that he had developed earlier. So maybe this is the oscillator that is actually sending the vibrations to some kind of a plate that I could not find a picture of. So um, it it just basically shows you the oscillator that he said was his greatest invention for mankind. Fascinating, because it certainly didn't get out there. Yes, and Rebecca says she's seen a picture of him sitting there in front of what looks like a huge fan. Yes. So I don't know exactly what all of those were. He had so many different inventions. These were just some that I thought, you know, we're looking at oscillation. So this again, now kind of ties into the Wave Watch just a little bit.
Hey, there it is. <laughs> I started to say, I think I have that in there, Rebecca. Maybe that's the one you have and maybe not. So this is something he was working on. I, there was no identification, but isn't this just totally amazing? When you think about the 1880s, the, you know, 2000, or excuse me, 1900, 1910, I mean, we were still horse and wagons and, you know, just basically getting out of buggies. So this was his lab, totally amazing. Yes, so he had lots of versions, yes. Sorry, my screen is taking forever to change up. I hope that doesn't mean I have a really slow, bad uh, internet connection. <laughs> so this was another science that Tesla pioneered. Mortal oscillation rate. Remember that word earlier, oscillation? He had an oscillation tool. Um, it was short, M-O-R is short for the initial stages of studying DNA, which Tesla started, and then it was later perfected by Dr. Royal Raymond Reif. And I think almost everybody in this crowd knows that that technology really was buried by the FDA. And of course, there's a long story in that, which we might go into another time, but basically, M-O-R, mortal oscillation rate, is what we're using on the Wave Watch a little bit. This is the study of individual DNA clusters and their natural vibration, oscillations. And every variation of life has a specific frequency that when oscillated will destroy the structure like a crystal glass. So we've seen that in several different ways, shapes and form. So again, MOR was uh, very uh, interesting in uh, the fact that Tesla worked with it first. Every variation of life has a specific frequency that when oscillated will destroy the structure like a crystal glass. And remember what oscillates it? The exact same frequency, a resonant frequency. So they resonate with each other. And then those frequencies can be destroy the structure. And here's actually an image and I got this from this website. I've seen this before on different websites. But um, again, it's kind of showing it in color and in black and white. So a widely unknown. How come this is unknown? <laughs> Where's our science field? A scientific phenomena is the mortal oscillatory rate. Every single structure of DNA has a natural resonance that when amplified can be effectively used to destroy the microbe. So this person is saying by creating a wave frequency library, we could create the most effective microbial treatment for humans. We could lay the foundation for science that could reshape cells and target and eliminate harmful microorganisms. I probably didn't need to read all of that, but this person is saying we could create a wave frequency library. Well, that's what the Wave Watch has. And if you go back a little bit further, where did I get that? I didn't reinvent the wheel. There are books of frequencies that have been published. There, uh, it's been in the mainstream for a long time. Excuse me, it's been in the side stream. <laughs> it's not the mainstream. It's been over to the side for a long time. But you can find frequencies. And what I did was do a wave frequency library so that we have those. And then this is what it looks like. One cell organism exposed to 1,550 hertz frequency until destroyed. So we have lots of frequencies on our watch and don't forget that each setting has many different frequencies because they have found, they have measured those and those, some of those are harmonic waves, 
Uh, just like music works, we know that those are just a little bit different uh, harmonic and those need to be included in there along with the main frequency. So I was really fascinated by this because somebody saying we need to create a wave frequency library. That's what we have. And several other tools have done that too. So that's basically some information about the wave watch and the connection with Tesla. It wouldn't be here if Tesla hadn't worked on all of this. Now, these are a couple other things that he did for the medical uh, arena. He described in detail uh, maximizing human energies. And so he started light therapy. <laughs> did the man have no limits? He did not seem to. He also developed light therapy. And he also developed the laser. Don't forget all that. So this is based on the understanding of quantum phenomena. So, gosh, I don't know if I got it put in here, but I found quotes where sound can be turned into light. So it can generate a spark, can generate a light. So sound is behind the light therapy also. Blew me away. Let me check out the chat here just a minute. Thank you in the chat. Um, Nicola also developed plasma, plasma water. And that was a long time ago. And his idea was that this water would have antiseptic properties. So he was using this coil that he was so well known for to create an energy arc to stimulate lightning. So he was saying if our water would get would have lightning, basically, that this water charge would have antiseptic properties and could reduce or eliminate the need for pesticides while simultaneously making plants healthier and grow faster. So we're not here to talk about this, but I got the results at the bottom. Obviously, this technology was blocked. And I kind of had a, a thought about that um, when I was putting it up there. I don't know what time frame that Monsanto started. So maybe he did this technology, you know, in the 1930s, somewhere there in there a little bit later. But um, I didn't know um, exactly uh, how this technology could have been blocked uh, if he developed it in the 1900s, because I didn't think chemical companies were around that much. But please correct me because I did not look up the time that some of these chemical companies would have been starting. Uh, but we can see that water could be used to uh, eliminate the need for pesticides if we just use our environment a little bit better. So Tesla had that covered also. So think about the world and how it could change if we put some effort into changing it and back people who are working with different ideas that uh, Tesla patented, like the MROD. It, it's fascinating. Don't you want free energy? <laughs> you know, don't know how that's gonna ever happen, but I was so fascinated by the whole concept. And just again, wanted to honor Nikola Tesla for this week and his birthday. So he does have this lab, um, which is now being, it was uh, taken down, torn down. Uh, this is what's remaining of it. And they're now transforming it into a science ed education and technology center. So people are starting to push back and use his genius and teach about it. So you can find a lot of stuff all over the internet about Tesla. Now, this one was a little bit interesting also, and I think we're just at the end, but he was saying that the wave frequency of a human being resonates between six and eight, and that our systems work in the same frequency range. We do know specifically our alpha waves and uh, function in that range, very low, very low sounding. And the electrical resonance of the earth is six and eight hertz. So he's saying <laughs> if we can control the resonance system electronically, 
we can control the entire mental system of humankind. Now, this was a scare factor to me a little bit, because if you listen to a lot of uh, different uh, articles, you might worry about people's uh, brains a little bit. So again, this is a concept a little bit more like uh, the, the uh, HARP concept that could some of these concepts have actually been taken and used negatively when his concept was always to do it for the good of mankind. But just wanted to let you know that there are things out there that kind of resonate, here I'm saying that word, they resonate with some of the things that we hear. So um, very, very interesting uh, that possibly these um, patents have been used negatively. And there's also the idea that when Tesla died, that within hours, the FBI or another three-letter agency was in his room packing up everything that he owned. And so they said there were 80 trunks taken out of his room, and some of them have never appeared again, even though his family that was still in Croatia does have the concepts and they received 60 trunks back at some point in time, but it took them years to get those back. So uh, different agencies uh, do have or have had a lot of Tesla's work. And again, this was a little bit negative for me uh, because um, I guess I just wanted to share that. Just like I heard, you know, I'm not real impressed with Harp either. So those were possible negatives when his life was so positive and he gave everything he had to develop all of these things for mankind. So I think that's about it. Uh, I'll stop the share and we've got just a few minutes to, um, you know, uh, visit back and forth. You can unmute yourself if you want to say anything or add anything to it. I hope you weren't disappointed. I'm, um, I hope that I gave you some energy how the Wave Watch ties into technology, but uh, didn't give you anything about specifics or did I? <laughs> I think there is a lot here, and I was just blown away about how Tesla uh, actually figured out the mortal oscillation rate even before um, the other gentleman did, Dr. Raymond Reif, or Royal, Royal Raymond Reif did. So I thought that was fascinating. So anyway, any comments? Yes, Rebecca. Well, it might be in the conspiratorial category, but I hear rumors, and I, I, I uh, put a lot of things on my three shelves, it, kind of the wait and see mode, that there is something in the works to release free or nearly free energy, not, not too distant future, but it's again, wait and see. Yes. <laughs> and that's why I tried to study it. And I finally found that company that was claiming that just a little bit. So now, there's a lot of things out there that we have not been privy to because they've been hidden because they can make money off of us. Mm -hmm. uh, Ladies, would it be all right if I stop our Facebook? It'd just be us talking. Uh, we could, that way, uh, if anybody wants to say a little bit more, because <laughs> we, we are, we were getting into that, and I was trying very careful not to be too much of a recording. Is there anybody that has a testimony about the Wave Watch? Anything that way? Okay, I think I'm going to stop recording because we, okay. uh, we're, we're pretty much done and we can share as much as we want once I stop recording. Does that go, that make sense? Okay, are you, have you stopped it, Linda? I'm trying here. Because I may have a testimony for you. Oh, well, go ahead then. I think it's still recording. Go ahead. Okay, well, you know that I've been dealing with this uh, spasms in my left leg for a very long time. I have been, well, I'm doing the, um, the salt in a glass of water every night, that's helped. Um, and I've been running a lot of the frequencies for muscle. And it just dawned on me uh, the other day, um, perhaps it's nerve related. Mm -hmm. 
So I have been running the several of the like neuropathy and um, numbness and several of the nerve. Um, and my leg is feeling better. Uh, the true test is when I will, you know, get out there and get, get my walk again. I did walk on, what's the day? Wednesday, I think a, Monday, well, I walked my, and I did do five miles and I was limping by the time I got home oh, because of my left foot. Um, then yesterday I did four miles and it's like, oh, it's a good thing I did. So, you know, so I've been trying to run the nerve frequency. So, and I've been running a lot yesterday and today. So I'm hoping that when I go the next time, I'm going to be able to do five and not be in pain or even four and not be able to be in pain with my leg and my foot. So um, things, I could just feel, I could just feel, feel it that that it's better without being out doing the distance walk so um yeah, and so I was gonna something have a, a little bit different yeah and that's a great idea to just uh you know try something different if it doesn't work right and maybe right. any can, other oh maybe thanks can, Steve. maybe kind of um touch on the nerve have you done that in the past yet yes um, uh -huh. I'll have to go back and check that out so okay thank you Nick, my dear thanks Bye. <laughs> Any other testimonies? Okay, I'm gonna stop live streaming.